Hello and welcome to the tutorial for dbmap.net. Today I'm going to give you a quick overview of the main features of the tool. I'll take you through the process of building a basic model over a map. We'll cover the basics, assuming you've not used the tool before. To start we're going to add a map of the area we're interested in. Head over to the right hand side of the screen. Here we have the main tools for interacting with our model. Click the bottom icon to bring up the Add Objects toolbar. Here we have all of the objects available to us. Point sources, barriers, buildings. We'll go over these objects later, so for now click on the last icon to add an image or map. Click anywhere in the model to bring up the pop-up window. Our options are Google Map, Local File and Online Image. We're going to add a Google Map, so use the location search to find the area you're looking for. You can search just like you would on Google. Once we're happy, we click Insert. The Google Map is inserted to scale. We need to zoom out, so we'll use the scale bar on the left. This is one way that we can zoom in and out of our model. For now, I'll just click the Zoom to Contents button so we can see the whole image. I'm going to lock it in place so it can't be moved around by accident. To do this, I'll use the Edit tool. I'll click on the image and change the setting, lock in place, to locked. Then I'll close the window. Now I'm going to start adding some buildings. I'll just zoom in a bit first using the zoom tool and drawing a window around the building. Back to the Add Objects toolbar, we select the building tool. This tool is designed to quickly add four-sided buildings with the fewest mouse clicks. You can click and drag along the length of one of the sides and then click and drag again for the width of the building. When you insert an object, the pop-up window opens automatically. So we'll give it a height and we'll choose a reflection coefficient from the estimates. You can see it's given a coefficient of 0.8 and a reflected level of approximately minus 1 dB. This means that the surfaces of the building will reflect sound waves with 1 decibel of absorption. We'll click continue and move on to the next building. We'll use the pan tool to move around our model. And then back to our add building tool. And again, we'll click three corners of the building. You can see it's loaded the same properties as the last building we edited. We'll give this building a name. This building has a gable roof, so we'll click that icon. You can see a second height has appeared. And this time we'll click outside the window to close it. Now we can see here the name we gave the building, its two heights, and also that the ridge of the roof is running in the wrong direction. So we'll fix that by bringing back the edit window but rather than using the edit tool, this time we'll do it by right clicking on the building while in select mode. If we move the window over, you can see the building we're editing is highlighted. Now when we click the rotate building icon, you'll see the ridge change direction. This time we'll close the window with the escape key. We'll add one more building, but this time it's going to be more complex than just four sides. I'll hold the control key to temporarily activate the pan tool. You can also zoom out using the mouse wheel. Head over to the Add Objects toolbar again and click the Barrier icon. Click along each corner of our building. You'll see it adds a barrier as we do this. You can hold the Shift key to maintain right angles as you do this. If you wanted to just add a barrier, then you could stop here, either by clicking the same point again or by right clicking. But we're going to keep going and then turn our barrier into a building by clicking the first point again. Now you can see there are no roof options. This is because we can only model sloping roofs for four-sided buildings with parallel sides. The building isn't quite right, so we're going to adjust it so that it fits better. When you hover over the object with the select tool, you can see all the nodes. We'll click and drag the corners until they fit better. The black midpoints will move the wall. We can hold shift here to constrain the movement to right angles. The black round center point allows us to move the entire object. Now it's time to add a noise source. On the Add Objects toolbar, click the Point tool. We'll click where we want it to be placed. You'll notice the noise map starts calculating automatically. You can choose between modeling a single frequency or octave bands. We have two rows for our sound power levels, unweighted at the top and A-weighted in gray at the bottom. Below this table, we have a list of sources called the Sources Library. Here you can select the level of other sources in your model. Users with a subscription will also see their saved levels. And finally, the library includes a small extract of sources. Let's select one of these now. You'll notice that the noise map has updated automatically. You can control this behavior of automatically calculating by using the icon in the top left of the screen. 
It's currently set to on, but we can click this to pause the noise map calculations. Subscribers can speed up calculations by clicking the icon. The area for where the noise map is generated can be seen here. We can edit this like an object by moving the corners or click and dragging the border. There is also this tool here that can be used to draw the area we wish to calculate. Let's edit its settings by clicking the edge either with the edit tool or with the right mouse button. Our options here let us choose to leave the area free to move around or we can fit the area to our objects or choose to cover the full screen at all times. We can choose the height of the noise map and we can either configure multiple heights. Let's do this now. Click the multi-height button. Click apply. You'll see a new toolbar appear next to the scale bar that allows us to quickly step up and down through the heights. As well as the noise map, we can see the calculated level at desired locations by adding receivers. On our Add Objects toolbar, click Receiver and click where you want to calculate the level. You can see the receiver level was calculated automatically and it has drawn a spectrum graph. This can be toggled on or off. The height has defaulted to match the height of the noise map and you can see below a table of results for the receiver at the heights we specified for the noise map. These results can be copied to the clipboard by clicking on this icon. You can quickly toggle the states of most objects by clicking on them. Let's dive into configuring the model using the settings sidebar. Next to the export import button, you'll see the objects button, which brings up a table showing all of the objects in our model. We can select which type of object we wish to look at. We can disable and enable objects. We can modify a property of all the objects of that type by clicking on the column heading. We can center the object in view. And by clicking on the object name, we can bring up the edit object window. We can get back to our objects window again using this icon here. We also have options for clearing the model and for starting a new one. Back in the settings sidebar, we have the option to shorten our URL. The model is stored in the browser location bar. This means you can use the back button to undo changes and you can save the model by bookmarking or copying the URL. However, the URL can be very long. So to keep things simple, you can click the short URL button. This uses our servers to store the URL in a database and to give you a short URL to use instead. Next, we have object labels. We also have a few options for receiver design. And we can edit the design of the noise map, adding values and grid lines and changing the design of the contours. Further down, we have various parameters for the calculation method. Starting with the environmental options, we have the ground factor. This can be zero for hard ground or one for soft ground. The small question mark to the right will bring up the help section for this parameter so you can read more about what it does. You'll see that a lot of options in the model have these icons so that you can always find the help you need. Users with subscriptions can always get in touch with us if they're not sure about anything.